Hey, welcome, welcome back to part two of the process video for Luciana the Fairy. Yes, I have a first part which uh, shows you guys how I am drawing the rough lines that you guys see I'm inking over. And um, right now I'm just inking and painting. So this is the second part. If you guys want to see the first part, check this link out. Um, so do you guys want to be a true bada bat boom bow? And by that I mean um, artists. And <laughs> anyways, well you've come to the right place. Um, I am using for this uh, drawing a welcome into us four. I don't think it's they make the ones that I have anymore. But uh, the line is is still around the the, the pros. And uh, I've been using it for about five years took me a long time to learn how to ink it is not easy to ink a lot of people ask how do you ink with such crisp nice lines well first of all I've been inking or just using um, Wacom tablet for about 10 years now um, starting with a really cheap crappy one um, one of their very first ever um, uh, into those tablets that they that they were having like um, that they were selling um, I got from like this electronic show um, they were just like literally out the door first time ever displaying it for everybody and um, I begged my parents to get it for me it was like a hundred bucks and it was my like Christmas or birthday present or something like that but yes I've been using it for a long long time so is it easy no can you learn absolutely with patience and dedication you can learn anything just like riding a bike swimming basketball sports Pokemon training um, so it's not easy um, and I always get a lot of you know people saying how do you how do you ink so good well honestly for me I don't think it's good at all like I don't think it's that good like I think it's decent like 100% honest to, to truthness um, if you zoom into the lines, they're really broken and crooked. They are, like if you zoom in. And um, it really is an illusion. Because at some point, you don't need the lines to be super crispy clean. I used to um, try to make sure the lines were perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, but I realized there's only there's a certain point where you just have to get it um, for it to seem clean. Because you won't be zoomed in so close. So, um, depending on just how clean you want it you know you can you can vary it up um for me it's i don't feel like it's that clean um and yeah you won't be looking at it up close all the time so inking definitely is a process it's a it's a process where you take stages to do unless you were like just um magical like a magical unicorn then it's gonna be a little difficult because um <clears throat> especially for wacom tablets um Cintiq is a different story and I'll get into that later because I just got one um, But we will talk about the Wacom pad. So it's difficult because it's not a direct contact with like paper we, You know, we, we put our pe pencil down onto paper and we get the result immediately whereas Wacom there's a disconnect and because of that uh, We are anticipating where the lines are and we're kind of guessing constantly um, and our brain tries to calibrate according to that but you know, it's it's never 100% synced, and it's that syncing process that you're trying to train your brain to do. Um, which for me, even after 10 years, I still take 10 strokes to do a single line. This is going super fast, so you don't see all the um, like the several different strokes. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of uh, ways to improve your inking, and I did a video on um, beginners manga studio video. Post the link there too. Um, but I I break it down. Um, pretty much how I knew it about two years ago. Um, I might have to do an updated one because I did improve my inking process using the Wacom tablet. Um, but that's probably the most commonly asked question is how do you ink? Um, I take lots and lots of strokes, you know. Um, before I, I taught people to lower their DPI, but that was because I, that was because of my own handicap I was actually 
um, using a weaker computer. The one I'm using to record this um, was from 2008, and because of that, it slows down. So for me, I found that if you lower the DPI to like 72 when building your rough traps, um, and even up to the beginning stage of your um, cleanups, um, it really speeds it up. And keeping it like really low just just speeds up the the processing power, and it just feels a lot more like natural because. Because it's it the machine the hardware is performing at its its best, uh, but if if you guys have like nicer computers, you know nowadays it's 2015. All the computers come they come with pretty good processors, and um, it shouldn't be a problem. So lowering your DPI shouldn't matter unless you are like having um, processing issues. So quick tips: there are some tips that you can do, and I talk about it again in the Manga Studio videos. Um, the quick little tips. Not silver bullets, but the things that you want to keep in mind while inking are zooming in. Okay, zooming into your drawing and really close, just trying to ink over your rough draft lines. Um, uh, first of all, I want to talk about the process. It is a process. So you do a crazy loose drawing, and then you do a rough draft over it, which is messy. And then if you want, you can do another messy one over it. That way you're not like restricted and you can just you know feel free to just mess up and not be so careful it's that cleaner clean clean stage and even even after that clean stage you can ink it again if you're just psycho like that so that's one way is 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 breaking them up into stages that way you're not trying to ink over like super messy lines which is really difficult um it's a lot easier to clean up over um cleaner lines um because it's closer to your finished product and that goes into my next point is innovate. When you're inking, try to innovate and be inspired by your um, rough draft lines. This way, this means you're not you're not trying to stay on the line. You're trying to create a new line um, on top of your other line, but keeping your other line as a reference. But you you want to try to hit the line, of course, but don't limit yourself to it. So think of that line as just kind of a guide and try to kind of ignore it with your peripherals and just and just stroke like above it and pretend like it's not there but it's there you see what I mean because if you try to if you try to go over it it's like trying to shoot an arrow in, into a bullseye from like a long distance and the closer you are the easier it is the same with inking the thinner the lines are you know the the thinner the area where you can ink over it, it's the more likely you're gonna miss it. Um, rotate your canvas. If it's not comfortable for your hand, rotate your canvas to an angle where it's comfortable. And in Manga Studio, I believe rotating is uh, Shift, Command, and Spacebar. I think. I'm um, looking at my ah whatever. Rotate canvas. Figure it out. <laughs> I'll, t I'll teach you another video. You guys, you guys go watch it. Um, Long broad strokes. Take long broad strokes. Long broad strokes. Um, little strokes will come off very frustrated looking. Very just like scratchy. Okay. So if you have long broad confident strokes, you have a long broad confident lines. If you have short stuttery fluttery lines, they will show. So try to limit the strokes. So think of it as stroke economy. And that just means how much, how many strokes does it take to accomplish that form or that object? If, whether it's a rib cage, a shoulder, a thigh, whatever it is, how many strokes do you want to take to convey it? You know, like there can be a lot of angles. Look at the elbow right there. There can be a lot of angles for the elbow, but I choose probably two, two to three lines. Probably one line for every object, whether there's shin calf whatever it is um and that also depends on how much how detailed you want it another trick that i like to use is ghosting over your lines and ghosting is basically drawing like in the air or like hovering your your pen just above the pad and pretending like you're about to make a stroke and you you'll just ghost it one two three and then you make a the real stroke and that just basically tries to synchronize your brain with the little cursor that you see in front of you it's that it's that synchronization and it probably gets you up to like 70 percent 80 percent but um 
if you don't do it for a long time, it can drop back down to like 40%. So if you're not conscious of ghosting, then you're not synchronized. Um, so that's something yeah, I, I have to remind myself to do over and over to get to get used to. And, and over time, you get better at it. So ghost of your drawing. Yeah. All right. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Bada bada boom. Hey, yeah.